Hello friends, how are you all? I hope you all are safe and secure and you all are preparing very well for your coming ARS examination. I hope you have made your roadmap as suggested by me in last video. The video link is uh, given in description box. Uh, many students are calling and asking many concept of extension. So I thought unit wise we will discuss important concept of extension from today's onwards. The best way to utilize these modules will be uh, you should listen to this video. Also, you should refer to the books. You remix both the things and you make your own notes. The beauty of these modules will be I will be giving you the snapshot of my handwritten notes uh, while I discuss important topics. And I will also tell you the books from where I am teaching you, from where I am explaining the concepts. So you will get my notes also. You can pause the video and you can note down and you can refer to the books and make your own notes. But my suggestion to you is uh, you should make your own notes. Uh, don't only rely on these videos. Uh, take help of these videos, but you should make your own notes. So let's start. So the first unit of extension is fundamental of extension and communication. And when we analyze this unit, we can divide this unit into two subunits, subunit one and subunit two. So the subunit one will consist of fundamental of extension. So from this unit, what is expected from you? You should know the first is history of extension. There can be five mark question on write a brief note on history of extension. Then you should have a clarity on various definitions of extension given by different authors. So what are the key points on these definitions? I will explain to you. Then you should have a clarity between formal education, informal education, non-formal education and why extension is being called as non-formal education and what is the difference between formal education, informal education and non-formal education. Then you should have an idea and you should be able to differentiate between extension education and extension service. Then what is learning situation, philosophy of extension, objectives of extension education, functions of extension education, principles of extension education, principles of learning, extension educational process, very important. In many times five marks it comes. Uh, teaching learning process, learning situation, steps in extension teaching, andragogy and principles of adult learning and there is a very uh, one important concept here uh, if you have might have read the book pedagogy of oppressed by paulo freire he gave an idea of consentization so we will look into it because it comes many times in five marks question when i appeared in 2014 it was five mark question explain the concept of consentization given by paulo freire in his book pedagogy of oppressed then extension is different from transfer technology. How extension is different from transfer technology? We will look into these 16 topics under fundamental of extension. So now the book needed by you for covering these topics will be extension communication and management by GL Ray. Basic book. You might have this book and the first chapter of this book. Then dimensions of agriculture extension by A.K. Singh, Lakhan Singh and R.R. Burman. And this is also a basic book like GL Ray. All units are there. So you need to cover this part from this book. Then Handbook of Extension Education. Very wonderful book written by Dr. Deepak Day and Dr. Basu Prabhupada Then uh, if you want to go in little bit advanced and if you want to understand the deep meaning of extension, concepts of extension and what basically extension is, then you can also refer to Agricultural Extension by Vanden Ban and Hawkins. So these are four books from where you can make your notes on these topics. So here we go. So now first we will take history of extension. Okay. So the term extension was first used by James Stewart of Trinity College, Cambridge University in 1867 when he was addressing women association and working men clubs of North England. So many times objective questions comes about James Stewart and women association and working men club. So please note. Then in 1871, uh, when James Stewart was giving lectures to these women association and working men clubs, so he thought that teaching adults should be uh, followed by a different methodology outside the four walls of college other than formal education. So he was the first person to realize that the adults should be taught in a different way. So he appealed to the officials of Cambridge University in 1871 uh, to establish extension centers when exclusively these association and working men clubs will be taught. 
right so uh, in light of his suggestion cambridge university in 1873 london university in 1876 oxford university in 1878 developed extensive system for the first time then an exclusive report known as famine commission report please note down the year 1880 Famine Commission report 1880 was the first report which draws the attention of government to the need of agriculture education and research so this was the first report which was compiled and where it was mentioned that agriculture education and research is needed agriculture is also a science where research is needed so agriculture for the first time was seen from the frame of research right so this was the 1880 report of famine commission then on the basis of the recommendation of this famine report six colleges were established at kanpur nagpur lalpur coimbatore in 1906 and pune and sabor in 1907 so sometimes they will ask these questions so please note down the year uh, carefully then two very important acts came right many times i have seen these questions uh, in one or different form so please note the first uh, act which came in 1887 was hatch act 1887 uh, this act established the system of agricultural experiment station for the first time in association with each state land grant university so uh, many times match the following or objective type question comes then hatch act of 1887 you should remember agricultural experiment stations then another act smith lever act of 1914 So Smith Lever Act 1914 created the system of cooperative extension. So you should remember Smith Lever Act 1914 dash cooperative extension. So Hatch Act experiment stations, Smith Lever Act 1914 cooperative extension, right? So in 1914, so I am going time uh, time wise, right? Uh, I have made a important uh, uh, notes on uh, according to the time series, according to the events happened one by one. right so in 1914 the labad agriculture institute was established through the effort of dr sam higginbottom so today also this institute was known as dr sam higginbottom agriculture institute uh, alabad uh, in 1914 then government of india established and this was the historical revolution in field of agriculture research and education and the organization where i am also working many scientists of our country are working and contributing significantly to agriculture science was established that is known as imperial council of agriculture research in 1929 as an autonomous organization under ministry of agriculture which is today known as indian council of agricultural research uh, icar it was established in 1929 at that time its name was imperial council of agriculture research right now when india got independence in 1947 so the situation of agriculture education was like this there were 15 institution in the country providing agricultural and veterinary education and the total intake capacity of the student at that time was only 1500 students so uh, no question will come from here but uh, for sake of your knowledge i am also giving the scenario right then now please note then university education commission also known as radha krishna commission came in 1948 1948 and he, that commission gave a very historical suggestion recommendation of establishing rural universities in the country to teach agricultural education to do carry out the research in agriculture rural universities for the youth of our country so this was the recommendation of radha krishna commission also known as university education commission 1948 right so on the basis of this the first joint indo american team was formed in 1955 and second indo american uh, team was formed 1959 and this was the year 1955 1955 and uh, that commission report on the basis of their suggestion the first agriculture university of our country known as gb pant university of agriculture and technology in 1960 and where pandit govind ballabh pant played a very crucial role of establishing that university was came at that time please also note very uh, two important points the first post graduate program in extension education was started at bihar agriculture college sabor bihar in 1955 and then the post graduate program was started at college of agriculture nagpur in 1958 The first PhD program was initiated by IRI New Delhi in 1961, and in 
and then Indian Society of Extension Education ISEE was formed in 1964. So these development made extension as a profession and these development established extension as a discipline. So extension became discipline as well as profession as it practiced today. Right. And then a very important year you should note down that ICR earlier known as Imperial Council of Agriculture Research became Indian Council of Agriculture Research ICR in 1965. Right. Then a new commission, a yet another commission came known as Kothari Commission in 1966 and this commission recommended establishment of at least one agriculture university per state when the mandate of teaching research and extension. And today we know that we have more than 70 agricultural universities in our country and more than 100 ICR institute uh, established in this National Agricultural Education Research System, NARIS, which we call. Right. So this is the brief, uh, some important points. So you can jot down the notes, uh, these points which I have uh, given you and also from the books, different books, you jot down the important points of the history uh, because this will be coming in short notes and also some of the objective you will find from these important dates right so now moving on the uh, second topic which i told you definition of extension this is very important right it's not only important that you are going to give examination but for because you are extension discipline student you should have a thorough clarity in concept of extension what actually extension is so how we will define extension so many students what they do is they mug up the definition so it's not the right way because there are lots of definition how much you can mug up right so important definitions so only key words of particular definition you should keep in your mind and rest of the things if you have understood understood then you will make the definition so the extension can be defined in three important ways right the first one we can define extension education as a discipline so now I am calling extension education as a discipline. Why I am calling extension as a discipline? Because it has a systematic body of knowledge where its content has been derived well from uh, psychology, sociology, anthropology, uh, rural sociology, social psychology, communication, journalism, management, administration, etc. So systematic body of knowledge and contents are derived from well established science. So now extension is a discipline. So now extension as a discipline, there are three important definitions under this category. First, and the most important definition given by J.P. Ligans in 1961. He defined extension education as an applied science. So in this definition, the keyword is applied science. So J.P. Ligans 1961 defined extension as an applied science consisting of content derived from research, accumulated field experiences and relevant principles from behavioral science. So another keyword, behavioral science, it means Extension is an applied science, but the content has been derived from behavioral science and these content has been synthesized into philosophy, principles, content, method. Why they have been categorized into these? Because to solve the problem of out of school education for adult and youth. So adult and youth, uh, philosophy, principles, content, methods, behavioral science uh, and applied science are the key words of this definition. J.P. Ligans 1961. Very important definition and you can say very uh, good definition very enriching definition of extension put by gp legals 1961 right another definition of this category will be from sinha 1974 he defined extension education as an applied sense again same applied sense with the main base as technology which has to be introduced in the system through favorable acceptance and adoption by the people so the keywords will be applied science acceptance and adoption of technology that's why we study the whole course diffusion and adoption of innovations, right? So he first time he talked about technology, he talked about adoption, acceptance, and again he categorized extension as an applied science, Sina 1974. And then came Singh 1980. He defined extension education as applied behavioral science. Now, very important to note, one new word he has uh, inserted between applied and science behavioral. So again, Today, what we read extension definition is, is derived from these uh, things, 1980 definition, applied behavioral science, the knowledge of which is to be applied to bring out desirable change in behavioral complex. Very important. Today, when we ask extension, extension, people say extension is an educational process to bring desirable change in behavior of our client farmers, desirable change. 
and when we talk about behavior we talk about knowledge attitude and skill three things three important sub component components of behavioral components right so this came from the definition of sing 1980 crucial terms are applied behavioral science desirable change in behavior now the second category of definition of extension is extension education as communication intervention right so here two important definitions are there when dan ban and hawkins in 1988 they defined extension as a professional communication intervention professional communication intervention so here what communication they are referring they are referring to a dialogic interaction between farmer and between scientists between farmer and between extension agent dialogic where the interaction is reciprocating between two people so they are calling it as a professional communication intervention so please note when den ban and hawkins 1988 they defined extension as a communication intervention then rolling in 1986 also defined extension depends on communication for its leverage he defined extension as communication intervention again and he gave the aim of extension to bring voluntary change in people this is very important to name note that extension the aim of extension is not to give disseminate technology the aim of extension to bring desirable change and that change should come voluntarily among people among farmers we will look into it why extension is not transfer of technology only we will look into the concept given by paulo freire idea of conscientization right so please note rolling 1986 definition vanden ban and hawkins 1988 definition will come under category of communication intervention now now uh, the third category uh, we will define extension as education very important so seville 1965 he defined extension is to teach people for the first time he used the word teach people living in rural areas how to raise their standard of living by their own effort using their own resources of manpower and material right so the key word will be teach people by their own effort using own resources using own manpower very important definition and these terms we also use in today's context right so seville 1965 then came dama and bhatnagar 1980 they also defined the extension as a behavioral change following continuous persuasive and discriminative educational process so they define extension in terms of educational process bringing uh, behavioral changes behavioral science they talked about so behavioral science educational process are the two key important keywords and they have also told that uh, again uh, principles diffusion by is proven methods principle philosophies resulting learning involvement of both client and change system So again, they have talked about the same concept like J.P. Ligon's, but the keywords which they have given is behavioral science, educational process, and client and change agent system. So you have to uh, read these definitions under extension education category. Seville in nineteen sixty five, Dhamma and Bhatnagar nineteen eighty, and now the fourth thing which I want to uh, tell you uh, because we are talking about definition. So extension is a discipline. Why it's a discipline? I have told you. extension is a profession so why extension is a profession because it has a body of specialized knowledge with self directing practitioners with long formal trainings so they have practitioners when any science has practitioners who are practicing and they are doing it actively in, uh, taking uh, doing research teaching engaging uh, the different uh, trainings under the system then it's become a profession so extension is a discipline extension is a profession and we can define extension under three categories extension as a communication intervention extension as a education and extension as a discipline there are many other definitions like ensminger definition and like different commissions has given definitions of extension mentioned in gl rebu so please also include those definitions i have told you the the most important crucial definitions so the, there is a also a wonderful book uh, of uh, by uh, dr b kumar hansra right extension education for human resource development and this concept actually taught by uh, dr b kumar sir to us Uh, when i was doing my phd in pandagar so uh, the that book consists of these definitions and categorizes of these definition under these three heads so it's uh, our great way to understand extension right so please note down these definitions from here now we are in a position to define extension in our own words so uh, can we say that extension is an applied educational process yes extension has accumulated field experience and relevant principles drawn from behavioral sciences yes 
it has body of philosophy principles contents and method yes it has aim of bringing desirable change in behavior of rural youth and adults when we say desirable change in behavior you can write in bracket knowledge attitude and skill uh, the aim of extension is to solve the problems yes by utilizing the own efforts of the client by utilizing their own resources and materials and it the aim of extension to bring voluntary change in people so extension aim is to facilitate that process empowering the farmers right now let's move to the another topic that is formal education in formal education and non formal education so first we will discuss formal education so what is formal education Uh, i will explain to you with an example you are uh, studying you are you are doing your msc phd and you have done your graduation from different universities you have done your schooling from school this all come under formal education yani formal education is highly institutionalized chronologically graded and hierarchically structured education system of school or university where syllabus is fixed where you have a different time table where your syllabus is defined and all the things are arranged systematically you cannot uh, move out of that structure book a rule book you have certain courses that are approved by the dean committee but that are approved by the university administration that is structured formalized so that becomes formal education classic example will be schooling classical example will be university education right now coming to the informal education so what's informal education again we will understand from an example like a student we are we all have gone to our colleges after colleges we have returned to our hostel life right we have learned many things from our friends we have learned many things from our seniors we have learned many things of from our parents from where it come from it comes become from informal education right when i will again give you one example we always say ravana tagor was not formally educated he was informally educated at home ram krishna paramhans was not formally educated he was formally educated at home by his parents by his uh, all the cultures from uh, he has uh, inherited so from the social system from your society from your parents from your colleagues from your people surrounding you that social structure which you learn becomes informal education so informal education is a lifelong process lifelong because you can learn learning never stops so it's a lifelong process by which every person acquires and accumulate knowledge attitude etc from daily experience and exposure so again the key words of informal education will be daily experience you are uh, you are learning from your experience right if you are committing one mistake you are learning it and you are deciding that i will never commit that mistake again you are learning from a past experience then exposure right and formal education if the key words will be hierarchy institutionalized chronologically graded education system of school university right and now the third term very important very important non formal education right many times students are being confused between informal education and non formal education so non formal education is again organized systematic educational activity carried outside the four walls of formal system outside the four walls of school college the target audience for non formal education will be adult children and it is based on according to the needs the classic example of non formal education is the adult education programs right that's why extension comes under non formal education so please note down extension is neither formal not uh, informal extension is a non formal education i am talking about extension service the process of extension which we do at village level is non formal education and the study of extension introductory extension course you are studying into university or inside the four walls of your university it becomes formal education so extension has both types formal education and informal education formal education inside university you are reading diffusion of innovation course you are reading introductory extension course and outside the four walls of college the real extension work in ground level is non formal education so now a question comes generally in five marks from here so what is the difference between formal education and non formal education uh, it's a very important questions uh, objectives can come and it this question can come in five marks very simple to write but still your answer should be very good so formal education teaching occurred at institution 
नॉन फॉर्मल एजुकेशन टीचिंग आउटसाइड द फोर वॉल्स ऑफ कॉलेज एस आई टोल्ड यू क्लासिकल एग्जाम्पल इज विलेज सेमिनार यू ऑर्गनाइजिंग यू आर ऑर्गनाइजिंग डेमोस्ट्रेशन सो इट ऑल बिकेम नॉन फॉर्मल एजुकेशन यू आर गिविंग ट्रेनिंग इन फार्मर्स फील्ड राइट फॉर्मल एजुकेशन एग्जाम्पल विल बी स्कूल यूनिवर्सिटी क्लासेस आर गोइंग ऑन then in formal education learners are homogeneous because in bcag all students who have passed 12th class they will be in your bcag group first year in school those who have passed 6th class they will be in 7th class so more or less learners are homogeneous with common goal goal is simple to learn the concepts right here in non formal education the learners are heterogeneous because they are farmers one farmer can be 25 years age one farmer can be 60 plus age one farmer can be socially very good economically very good very sound and other farmers can be marginal small farmers so it's heterogeneous with diverse goals some are rice farmers some are wheat farmers some are doing vegetable some need training on a particular horticulture crop some are need training in different crops so in non formal education learners are heterogeneous in non formal education learners are homogeneous in formal education there is a fixed curriculum na in bcag you have all we all have read the syllabus still the ars exam is the classical example of formal education exam because you have a fixed syllabus asrb has given syllabus i am teaching the, the concept according to your syllabus unit wise right so fixed curriculum examination systems rules regulation and fixed norms while in non formal education no fixed curriculum because it's a adult education so we will look into the concept of adult education the principles given by nolls uh, in adult education the concept given by paulo freire in andragogy we will look into it so there is no fixed curriculum flexible no examination we do not take examination of farmers right we take feedback from farmers we generally do knowledge test type of things but it's not to uh, give them some certificate or nothing uh, to do like that so no fixed curriculum flexible and no examination non formal education then the next point is knowledge flow in formal education from teacher to learner right teacher comes teacher teaches they you have confusion you ask questions and you assume that what teacher is teaching is true right while in non formal education the information the knowledge flow from learner to extension worker also because farmers is very experienced one they have indigenous technical knowledge uh, you should have a clarity on itk concept also indigenous knowledge so knowledge flow from farmers to scientists farmers to extension agent also in classes also sometimes the student gives very good reply and teacher also enriches but still more or less we can say that uh, knowledge is flowing from teacher to student to learner while in non formal education it's vice versa both because seminar is the classical example village level seminar gaon ki sangoshti where we interact with farmers in uh, sangoshti and farmers also give feedback then again we give uh, the solutions to different problems the right discussion is going on right then in formal education theory then practical right teacher teaches you theory in the theory class and then you do practical in uh, practical class for example teacher teaches pra participatory rural appraisal in theory class then in practical class teacher takes you to the village and uh, you perform pra in a practical situation right in non formal education practical first and then theory for example classical example will be demonstration we are demonstrating a new variety of rice so first we will uh, show them the demonstration the quality of the rice like demonstration in field and then we will explain the quality of the grains quality of the leaves quality of the uh, other of that variety that breed uh, to the farmers so practical first and then theory why this is happening we will discuss when we will discuss adult learning because adult has experience right they need problem solving solutions problem oriented uh, answers so that's why practical first and then theory and then formal education the approach is deductive deductive means when you are uh, uh, first understanding the general scenario and then making it specific right in your classes right if you are reading horticulture crops so you are reading lots of horticulture crops so you are assuming the whole scenario of the orchard and then you narrow down into different diseases and other things so general to specific that's become deductive approach in formal education while in non formal education it's inductive inductive from a particular uh, problem uh, of particular farmer we will try to explain the concept of particular problem to all the farmers so that every farmer get enriched we will generalize the concept of that problem by taking the problem from a particular case that's become inductive when we move from particular to general right uh, so uh, formal education is vertical as uh, you know because teacher to student it's vertical 
and non formal education you can say horizontal because uh, we are interacting in different levels of farmers and farmers are also giving uh, knowledge to other farmers farmer to farmer extension is also going so horizontal network is there so these are the important uh, difference between formal education non formal education you can also find this uh, difference in gl ray book so please go through that book and uh, from these notes and you can make your own notes right so now when we analyze the elements of non formal education so non formal education is learner centered always centered to the learner what learner wants uh, the teacher teaches that concept what learner wants it's learner centered it's not teacher centered not the subject matter specialist center right then flexibility flexibility means in terms of curriculum in terms of the uh, itinerary of your training program in terms of the time date and in terms of the pedagogy also it's flexible because you are dealing with adults then it has informal relationship there is no teacher there is no student kind of situation there is no rules which are binding farmers to scientists farmers to extension agent so it's a informal relationship based on rapport based on your knowledge based on your past experience right then reliance on local resources because extension uh, i explained you different definition so there is a local resource in a village we have to solve the problem agriculture problem of village by their own efforts by utilizing their own resources own resources so this is very important reliance on local resources then decentralization in a gl ray book there is a chapter of democratic decentralization decentralization means when we are giving authority to lower strata so that they also feel empowered right so in farmer also we identify the opinion leadership we are giving certain power to opinion leadership then opinion leadership again identify four or five farmers active farmers they feel empowered and then this process goes on so that one extension agent can touch many farmers several farmers and then immediate use according to needs this is the most important the immediate problem should be solved by extension process that's why extension is a non formal education so these six important characteristics of non formal education and these are the six important characteristics of extension education so now moving to the another topic that is levels of extension many times this question comes into five marks differentiate between extension education and extension service very simple to understand isko aap aise samjhiye extension education the uh, the process of education which is going under the four walls of your university you are a student of a university teacher is teaching you extension so that you become a human resource in future for extension uh, service right so uh, that process which is going inside the four walls of university teacher are teaching you that's become the extension education part of extension and when you get educated from the college you pass out and you became extension agent a scientist professor and actually in farmer field you go and you perform extension work that become extension service right so let's look into what mentioned into book extension education this is performed by higher learning institution like agriculture universities college icr institute extension is integrated with teaching and research the aim is to develop to educate train professionals for teaching and research in extension and for extension service right classical example will be 70 agriculture universities teaching students iri teaching student ivri teaching student ndri teaching student so the classical example and after when students pass out and join uh job become extension agent become scientist somewhere in organization then they perform extension service so let's look what extension service is to provide educational service to the people according to their need for improving their life through better working and the main responsibility of extension work extension services lies with the state government right department of horticulture animal husbandry forestry fisheries and the extension service state department are location specific input intensity and target oriented so they have the aim is to train the farmers to empower the farmers to make the farmers a beneficiary so the extension work at ground level become extension service and the education concept of extension which is going on into universities and other uh, institutes become extension education part so now moving to the another topic which is the most important topic of extension and it's very important to understand also not from the pro examination point of view but otherwise also philosophy of extension education right so first there is a definition of philosophy philosophy is the pursuit of wisdom a body of proper principles or laws of knowledge it is view of life theek hai Uh, it's good uh, that you should understand the philosophy but the philosophy of extension is very important from examination point of view 
So who gave the philosophy of extension? Kelsey and Harney in 1967 gave philosophy of extension and they defined the whole philosophy in one line. And this is very important. If you remember this line, you can write five marks answer. Because this is the crux of the philosophy of extension to teach people how to think, not what to think. There is a saying also, if you teach a person uh, how to catch fish rather than giving fish again and again day by day, the people, the person will survive. Right. So if you have to empower farmers and make them uh, to learn how to think in a particular situation, how to generate solution of a particular problem from local resources by utilizing their own expertise, by utilizing their own indigenous knowledge, uh, then uh, the philosophy of extension education is there. So how to think, not what to think. Because you will not be again and again going to a particular farmer to tell what to think, what to think, right? You should empower them and you should enable them how to think, right? So uh, important points from philosophy of extension education is to bring changes desirable in knowledge, attitude and skill. That is the behavior. The behavior will change only when person learns how to think. Right. Then the third important point is importance of individuals in promotion of progress for rural people and for nation. Uh, these two important points are mentioned in your uh, GLRA book. There are other chapters in books where philosophy of extension education, uh, they have given many other points. You can also note it down. But always remember how to think, not what to think. Kelsen Honey, 1967. And examples you can quote. Uh, from agriculture scenario. So this is philosophy of extension education. Then coming to objective of extension. I am moving little but uh, fast because we have to cover many other important topics. Uh, if you have confusion, feel free to ask. Please comment uh, uh, in comment box and I will be taking those concepts in my next module. Right. So objective of extension, it's mentioned. We have discussed also objectives are expression of the ends. Sometimes this becomes the objective question in your examination. Objectives are expression of the ends towards which our efforts are directed. This definition you will also find in your management concept. Uh, when we will cover management, we will also cover what are the different type of objectives and uh, how these are defined, right? To assist people to discover and analyze the problems and need to develop leadership because you have to develop leadership among uh, farmers. That's why we study opinion leadership. Uh, you also remember that JL Moreno sociogram and uh, those techniques, right? Uh, to disseminate the information and the most important is feedback to take the feedback from the farmer so that you can improve the extension program in future, right? Object of extension, then function of extension, change in knowledge, change in skill, change in attitude, change in understanding, change in goal, change in action, change in confidence. These are the functions of extension. You can elaborate uh, in your own way. Uh, there are many examples in books. You please uh, read from these books. So when we talk about knowledge, attitude, skill, we are talking about the behavioral component extension and the function of extension to bring people desirable changes that behavior. Right. So now the most important part from this concept is principles of extension. And from here they are making many objectives like which of the following is not a principle of extension. So three will be principle of extension and one will be the principle of learning which we will discuss after some time. Right. So you should remember these 11 principles of extension line to line with the example. Sometimes it comes into five marks. So you should are able to quote one example in under one principle. And don't mug up. Please understand this principle. You will always remember this principle at the time of examination automatically if you understood these concepts. Right. So principles are generalized guidelines which form the basis for decision. This is again important to note the definition of principle. Uh, they can ask an objective question. So principles are generalized guidelines which form the basis for decision. Right. So the first principle of extension is principle of cultural difference. Very important to understand the extension agent is going to village to carry out extension work among farmers. So farmer has a different cultural background because he belongs to village. Extension agent belongs to uh, city, town or other village. So he has a particular different cultural set. Farmer has different cultural set. So this cultural difference will always be there. That principle says principle of cultural difference is there. You have to minimize that difference. You have to intermingle with the farmers and you have to uh, overcome these cultural difference. So principle of cultural difference, you should note down what culture extension agent is coming from and what culture he is going to deal with the farmers. 
so there will uh, always be a cultural difference so this is principle of cultural difference now second is grass root principle grass root principle says that the work the extension work is always carried out at grass root level it means at village level you have to go to the village and you have to understand the problems of farmers particular farmers at field level grass root level and the solution generated from your empowerment process from your training should be from grass root level then only effective extension work is being done this is the grass root principle then the third is principle of indigenous knowledge indigenous knowledge means the farmers are not ignorant earlier if you remember if you read the history of extension properly then you will find that earlier the approach of extension was top to down top to down means whatever people thinking at top level they think that this is the problem with the village and they give their input they give their training without thinking of the farmers perspective without taking feedback from the farmers now farmers are not treated as ignorant they have indigenous knowledge indigenous knowledge means the knowledge which is inherited generation by generation coming to farmers uh, from their generation they have their knowledge they have they are also engaged in various experimentations now farmers are the real scientists who are working 24 hours into the field they have their own experience they have their own inherited indigenous system so that indigenous knowledge we have to utilize as an extension agent that's why extension education is a non-formal education where the knowledge flow from teacher to learner from learner to teachers vice versa in both sides that is the indigenous knowledge then principle of interest and need the problem which you are tackling the training which you are giving at farmers field it's uh, the client the farmers the target audience should have need they should have interest on that training on that village seminar on that technology then only they will listen to you uh, for their extension work this is the principle of interest and need if they do not have interest and need you have to generate that interest and need among them this is the principle of interest and need then principle of learning by doing very important or hamare panch tantra mein pehle se kaha gaya principle of learning by doing it means the technology which you are disseminating let farmer do it let farmer do it in a small scale when they will do it in a small scale then they themselves know the positive and negative sides of that technology they will learn by doing and it's the best practice if you remember the edgar dale cone of experience the highest level is when we do particular thing when you do when you write your own notes with your own handwriting when you do when you engage in this process then the learning will be highest this is learning by doing classic example is when farmers performs demonstration farmers uh, do uh, yield trials field trials at his own field by himself only then principle of participation you have to take participation of the farmers to whom you are going so it's very important to take all the farmers all the farmers all the villagers sarpanch and opinion leaders participate in your pro program then it becomes a people of participation so each and particular units of the family and all the categories of the villages all the persons of different caste and creed all the villagers should participate in your program uh, it should have representation from all the segments then it's became the principle of participation then family principle family principle family is the unit of society this again becomes a question family is the basic unit of society so you have to solve the problems of particular family you have to deal the individual problems of those family and and ultimately you have to give a broad solution so you have to work for those families this is the family principle of extension then principle of leadership you will require leadership from your side also and you should have able to generate leadership among villagers also among farmers also that's why we identify opinion leaders among villagers among farmers so it becomes very important to develop leadership to show leadership in extension work this is principle of leadership then principle of adaptability principle of adaptability means the solutions which you are giving to them in their agricultural problems that should be location specific that should be customized that should be adaptable to their local situations because the only then your technology will perform when it is adaptable to their local situation that is principle of adaptability then comes principles of satisfaction the end result of your extension process the end result of your extension program the end results of your training program which you are doing at village level it should bring satisfaction from your side also from farmer side also 
then comes the principle of evaluation principle of evaluation means you have to take feedback from the farmers you have to evaluate your own extension program summative evaluation or formative evaluation formative evaluation means before executing the extension program you uh, evaluate right you take feedback so it become formative evaluation and after the program when you evaluate your program it becomes summative evaluation so you should know what are the constants of your program what are the uh, uh, good points of your program what was their strength what was your uh, weakness and you analyze and then you reconsider in the second extension program which you are planning for that village or that project area so principle of cultural difference grassroots principle indigenous knowledge interest and need learning by doing participation family principle leadership adaptation adaptability satisfaction evaluation this is the most important part of extension uh, so today we will stop here please utilize these modules and day by day i will again upload the modules on these units and uh, we will able to complete the whole syllabus of extension uh, likewise right if you have any specific questions related to these concept you can write your comments so one by one we will cover all the units according to ars syllabus so please make the note your own notes after listening to this video and then referring to the book make your own notes and then uh, revise those notes and at the end then you make your objective book like sunil vg or other objective books then it will help you immensely and there will be parallel pro preparation for your mains examination and for your pre examination so today what we have covered we have covered history of extension definitions of extension by different authors formal education informal education non formal education extension education extension service uh, then we have covered philosophy of extension objectives of extension functions of extensions and principles of extension education so in next module we will cover learning situation very important then principles of learning then extension educational process teaching learning situation andragogy steps in extension teaching and concept of consentization and adult uh, education andragogy and uh, why extension is not transfer of technology we will cover these seven or eight topics in the next module so these two modules will cover our sub unit 1 fundamental of extension then we will start the fundamental of communication and then our unit 1 will be complete so likewise i will make all the modules for all the units so please utilize these modules and uh, uh, give your valuable feedback to me so that's all for today thank you i hope you have liked this session so thank you all